Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com. It is spring, it is rainy, the skies suck, it's rained for almost a week straight, so we're going inside for an image processing tutorial, and this one is really exciting. I think you should pay attention to this one, particularly if you shoot with a DSLR camera and you like editing your photos in Adobe Photoshop. Let's take a look at this powerful tool in Photoshop and how you can use it to process your images in a powerful way. The Select and Mask tool, I started seeing people talk about it in 2016, mostly used for photography, people cutting out uh, images of people with their hair and separating it from the background, but it can be used for astrophotography. And I found it to be such a powerful way to process your images. So if you look at my screen here, you'll see that I've made a few adjustments to the image already. If we go back to where I started, this was basically my stacked final image of the Lagoon Nebula, and then a threshold layer to set the black and white points. So that's the change there. And then a slight curves tweak. So pretty standard stuff that you'd be doing to all your astrophotography images if you're used to processing in Photoshop. But where the new tool comes into play is doing everything after this. So, as you can imagine, being able to adjust separate parts of the image individually uh, in a very intentional way can be very powerful because there's certain situations where you want to boost color in one area of the image but not the others. So in this example, we want to brighten and boost the colors of the Lagoon Nebula but not necessarily that background dark sky because if we do too much of a saturation boost to that sky, we're pulling out the green pixels and noise and all that stuff we don't want. So to be able to isolate our subject from the background sky is a very powerful tool. I'm gonna to show you how to do that. The kind of the old school way of doing this was to use the select color range and then with selected uh, as sampled colors, you can use the eyedropper and select uh, these kind of this pink hues in here. Using the fuzziness slider, you can kind of choose how much of those color hues you want to, you want to pick up. So if I have it set about mid-range here, that's going to select my target as well as some other areas that happen to have those shades of, of purple and pink in there. And normally, the, the old way I used to do it, I would stop here and then make a new adjustment layer based on this selection. So in this case, this case it would be a, a saturation boost. And I am just, you know, now I'm controlling the, the hues found in the Lagoon Nebula here, but we can define that selection in a much more specific way using the new Select and Mask tool. So again, I'll start by doing the color range method with the sampled colors. And then I'm going to fine tune it from there using the Select and Mask tool. So that's found under the menu Select, Select and Mask. So first things first, you can see that we're, we're using a mask here in Photoshop, but the view mode, I love that you can select your type of view mode. It's currently set to the one that I like, which is black and white. I like it plain and simple black and white, but you can use the, the red overlay, the marching ants, which is you know, very similar to just the original select color range method, and then the onion skin, which uses a 20% uh, it looks like opacity layer on top. I recommend using the black and white because then you can really see the, the feathered edge as well. This still gets my, my heart pumping how powerful this is. So first of all, we're going to move this feather slider up and look at what it's doing. It's softening those edges on our mask. That is very difficult to do in, in pretty much any other way than using this tool. You can use that feather tool with the, the marching ants on the select color range, but nothing like this and seeing a real time uh, adjustment like that. So as well as adjusting the feather, sometimes I like to pull the shift edges in. So as you can see, now we're just getting a very, very soft and subtle uh, definition of our target and not so much everything else. So then when we make changes to this mask, it's just going to affect very subtly the, those areas that we've defined. So I'm not going to change a whole lot more. Maybe I'll boost the radius up. And I'll say with this, if, if I have a very fast machine, making adjustments in here because it is using a lot of you know, computing power, it does 
sometimes take a second to adjust. It's going pretty fast right now because this isn't a huge image. So I'm going to set that as okay. And then again, it's going to go back to this very, not very useful marching ants overlay. That's just these, you know, dotted lines here. And now using that more well-defined uh, adjustment uh, layer mask, we can create an adjustment layer, which in this case, I just wanted to do a saturation increase. So now we've, we've better selected what exactly what we want to be playing with. And if I turn this layer off, you can see that beautiful mask in here in the layers palette. If I turn that layer on and off, what a subtle natural difference because with astrophotography, things can get out of hand quickly. You get too aggressive with your, your saturation and your curves and uh, you just create this kind of a scary image. Using this select and mask tool, you can be very intentional and specific about the areas you want to adjust each at their own time. So I'll, I'll show you another great use for this select and mask tool. I hope, I hope that's getting the wheels spinning for some of you guys that haven't used this tool and you're getting as excited as I was when I found it. So you, as you can imagine, this is so powerful, powerful for noise reduction because now we can select our target, leave that nice and sharp and just soften out very subtly that background sky. So we'll use this tool again. And this time we're gonna start with select color range and use the highlights because we just wanna separate the highlights from the midtones and the shadows. So I'm gonna adjust this range here, get a good starting point where it's our target and the stars and basically our signal in the image. Again, with that base selection, we're gonna to go to select and mask. And this time, well, that was, you know, that was a really good mask to start with. This time it's more so we just need to separate the, we don't want those hard edges between the areas that we've adjusted and ones that we've left alone. So that's where the feather comes into play. So we're gonna feather this nice, and this is potentially a little too aggressive on the feathering because it's gonna get real soft and, you know, less, less defined but this is for noise reduction. So we kind of want to apply noise reduction overall, but we just want to leave alone those really sharp areas that are unrecoverable to get back, some of the nebulosity in the Lagoon Nebula. So using this mask here, I've made our selection. Again, you see those marching ants. And one way you can do this is to, now that we've got that selection, copy and paste in place, just so it's not moving around. So if I move this layer around, you'll see that I've got just that selection moving around here. I'm just gonna do a control Z so it goes back. And now the layer underneath, we can apply those noise reduction techniques to without affecting that top layer we put on top. So I found one of the most powerful noise reduction tools is to use the camera raw filter. So that taps into the Adobe camera raw tool set that you get when you open up a raw image, if you're used to that for photography. So again, we've got that untouched layer on top, but we're going to apply our noise reduction to this layer underneath. So I'm going to zoom right in here and just look at some of that noise. Now this is great data to play with. I, I understand that, you know, this, this, it's not like you can't use these tools on, a, on an image with lots that needs a lot of work to bring it back as well. So I'll go into the detail tab and I'm going to bump up the luminance noise reduction. So if you see, I'm at a 33 right now. If I turn that all the way off, here's the noise. I'm up to a 36 now. Does a great job of smoothing that out. Another slider you can play with here because you do see some of that RGB noise in there. You can bump the color up and if you can see the difference there, very powerful yet rather subtle. I just took that noise out of there. Again, I'm just going to show that one more time because that, that makes my heart sing to see that. And again, so we've softened up as, as lightly as we have softened up the Lagoon Nebula. We know that that's going to be untouched because we've got that selected layer on top. So I've applied that noise reduction. And now if you look at the before and after, it's, it has applied some of that noise reduction to, to our um, Lagoon Nebula because we've softened that feathered edge, but a very subtle way we've retained the sharpness in this area here, just very soft adjustments. And if we want to go even more less aggressive, we can turn down the opacity on our noise reduction there to my favorite 66%. 
So I hope that came across as uh, you can understand the power of this selective mask tool. I think it's an amazing way to uh, process your image and being very selective of what you touch and what you don't. And uh, of course, I will say that when you start doing this kind of selective processing, you want to, you can't go too aggressive because if you start pulling at one areas and not the other, you get these very dramatic looking, almost, you know, fake looking images. Whereas when you apply effects globally, it brings everything together in a more natural way and you, ret you retain the areas of the highlights and the shadows where as they should be. So this image was shot with a stock DSLR camera, a real old one, a Canon XSI before I modified it, and a little 80 millimeter refractor, the Explore Scientific ED80 on a Celestron CG5 mount. So I hope this image and this processing tutorial was inspiring to you. I think it's insanely powerful. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this tool, the Selecting Mask. And uh, if you like this sort of thing, I hope you keep watching for more clear skies.